Welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie Awie of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracia Selassie Awie, Pastor of Treasure House ICGC. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's life above the ordinary. It's called the ultimate life. On this program, you are presented with the blueprint for the ultimate life. So expect to be changed, expect to grow, expect the ultimate life. We continue with our series on You Can Have a Strong Life. Ephesians 4, and I'm reading from verse 17 to 31. It says, So I tell you this, and I insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in the understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learn when you heard about Christ and were taught in Him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on uh, the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must uh, put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit uh, those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. It talks about us living righteously and standing guard over our mouths, our eyes, and our ears. If you don't stand guard over those areas, the enemy will get in. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. And do not give the devil a foothold. Do not give the devil a foothold. He, he will get into the area if you don't watch your eye gate, your ear gate, and your mouth gate, and, and your heart gate. And, and you end up gossiping, looking, thinking, hearing things you shouldn't. You've got to stand guard. You know, sheer willpower is not enough. I'm strong. I can do this. You need God's grace. You need to be immersed in Him and then stand guard over your life. I guess you all know Lindsay Lohan. She's had a tremendous career from being very young. Great actress. Made a lot of money. Very talented. But she's got herself involved in drugs or she got herself involved in drugs. She, she ended up in prison and it was, she was even crying in court. Her friends were so alarmed about her mental state and, and, and they, they, they want her back in the States. They say she, she's got an Achilles heel called Patin. But the good news is that she's bounced back now. She's back acting, which is good news. You want a strong life? It's up to you. You need to stay on God. The next point is we need to be immersed in the Holy Spirit. Ecclesiastes 
chapter 9, verse 8. It says, Always be clothed in white and always anoint your head with oil. Always be clothed in white and always anoint your head with oil. In other words, living in the will of God. But then we need oil on our lives. Mark chapter 1 verse 8. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It means you are immersed in it. You don't just get sprinkled. You don't have a sip. You don't have a dip. You don't have a sprinkling. You need to be completely immersed in the Holy Ghost. And when, when, when you are clothed with the Holy Ghost, you, you, put, on, you put on the Holy Ghost. You, you, you find out that your, your dignity will be protected. Your life will be strong. And you won't be in a weak place. To be unclothed is to be vulnerable and weak. There, there was a demoniac in Scripture. And the Bible says, Jesus came to that place and the man cut himself. The devil always harms you. I'll say that again. Satan always harms you. He doesn't care about you. He cut himself and tore his clothes off. When Jesus had come and heals him, it says he was clothed. Dignity. In his right mind. The Holy Ghost clothes you and protects you with the strength from God. You've got to be immersed. You should be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, in tongues at all times, because without it, you will not be clothed with the strength from on high. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. He says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be completely immersed in the things of God. You know, they, they bust some drug dealers a few years ago who were coming from Guatemala. $8.5 million worth of cocaine. And the reason they bust them was because these drug dealers are very clever. They started using boats that are called uh, semi-submersibles. They, they, they go into the water just below the surface and they sail along. And the drugs are in there. And so when, when you fly at a height, you don't notice them. But the coast guards are very clever. They go down with helicopters and they fly over the surface. And it blows the water away because they are not deep enough and you know what some of us do we are semi submerged in the holy spirit and we are semi submerged in the things of god but then the winds of adversity come and the enemy comes along and we get exposed next point we need to be completely sold out and immersed in god we need to be completely sold out and uh, immersed in God. My next point is this. We need to be covered in the armor of God. Are you covered in the armor of God? Achilles was killed because there was no protection over that foot. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 34. It says, just then, someone without Amen. shot an arrow randomly into the crowd and hit the king of Israel in the chink, crack of his armor. The king told his uh, charioteer, turn back, get me out of here, I'm wounded. Have you got a chink in your armor? Well, you need to put up a shield of faith. The Bible says in Ephesians to protect yourself from the arrows of the evil one. And unless you wear the armor of God, which is God's righteousness in Christ, and then live in a righteous life, do you know righteousness makes you very strong? If, if you've lost your righteousness, you will lack confidence. 
When your righteousness comes, you'll be bold as a lion. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. It says, The way of the righteous is like the gleam of dawn, which shines ever brighter until the full light of day. A person who walks in righteousness, they get stronger and stronger. And the enemy can't come against them. I've discovered that if you keep your conscience clean and you keep your heart clear as far as you can, when people attack you or accuse you, it's just water that bounces off you. But when you've got a guilty conscience and someone starts attacking you, you tell yourself, I'm not actually living the way I should. But when you are righteous, you go get lost. And we need to live in the righteousness of God. It puts an armor around you. And, and it's, it, it's not your own works. It's first what Christ has done. And then secondly, we do it to please God. It's the worship of faith. But then, it's the, the, the walk of faith that pleases God. It's the worship of faith. But then, it is the, it's the walk of faith. That pleases God. And some of us, we want to carry on playing in the world. But then we want to be uh, submersed in the church. I read about a guy who had an Xbox. And when you buy, or when you play it, not when you buy, when you play it for a long time, uh, it heats up. And, and when it heats up, it switches off. So what he did was he wrapped it in a plastic bag tied it up nicely and he put it into a dish of water while he carried on playing. Well, when the mom came home, he was unconscious on the floor. He thought he could submerge some part and still play, but it cost him. You've got to submerge all of yourself so that all of yourself can be protected. The next point is we need to be, we need to be submitted to authority. Lots of us are not submitted to authority. We are living in a rebellious world. And you can see it all around us. No one wants to submit. Everyone has got an opinion. We can't take instructions. The more educated or the more wealthier you are, the worse it gets. The Bible says there was a man called Naaman. He was a great captain and mighty. He had been uh, valiant and had all the credits about him. But scripture says he was a leper. So he goes to Elisha and he says, I want to see the man of God. The man of God says, what's the problem? He doesn't even come out. He just sends a message through, the, the, through, through his PA saying, go dip in the river Jordan seven times. Naaman says, you, you, you've got a cheek. I'm a great man. I ride, big, uh, I ride a big horse. So who do you think you are? I won't. But guess what? His immersion in the river is the answer to his wholeness. And so, he's only making himself vulnerable by leaving himself in a place of non-submission or defiance. When you don't submit to authority, you don't make yourself stronger. You make yourself vulnerable. And the Bible says, Elisha told him to dip seven times. In other words, get yourself thoroughly settled. Don't, don't just, you know, go to church or come to Treasure House and say, you know, to become a member, I have to just go through membership class. No, you need to immerse yourself. I'm going to follow the leadership here. I'm not going to mindlessly, mindlessly follow a leader blindly. I'm going to judge everything by the word, but I'm going to submit to authority. I'm going to put my opinion aside. I'm going to walk in unity. Because when you are unsubmissive, you break unity and you weaken all of us. You weaken yourself and you weaken us. Don't go home, you know, and then talk, 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 matter, matter, matter. Do you know what you are doing? The Bible says the church is like the city of God, Jerusalem. It's a picture of the city. When David attacked the city of Jerusalem, the enemy had it. You, you know how they got it? The Bible says that they mocked him and said, you will never get in here. The lame and the blind in here will drive you away. But guess what? They found out 
that there was a water shaft and they got through the water shaft into the city and conquered the city the water shaft is like a lack of submission it's an area that is not submitted and people get in and they will damage the whole church if you are a member of a church you need to submit you need to submit to authority you need to be in church if if you are committed and submitted otherwise you create an achilles heel and it will eventually damage everything in the house of god and so let's be immersed let's be baptized let's be submitted i read that uh, america's greatest uh, terror threat or achilles heel is not threats from outside but families who have moved from or moved into america from somalia yemen afghanistan iraq etc and have had children in america and the children have grown up not submitted to american values they are enjoying all the privileges the education the freedom and the liberty the material benefits but in their hearts they are not submitted to american values so they grow up as teenagers they go on the internet they check all these bombs they fly to somalia and all these countries they get trained as, ter as terrorists and they come back in as american citizens with american passport and they destroy lives and property and their achilles comes from within we need to submit we need to uh be behind the house of god wherever we fellowship and 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 give your all tell yourself i'm here or, or, or don't, don't don't be that person that says i'm here but part of me is elsewhere no your all must be in that place you know you go to church and you know i, I don't agree with this that's out of order you want to be strong we've got to give uh, our all to God. We are continuing with our series on You Can Have a Stronger Life. On April the 14th, 1865, the theater where Abraham Lincoln was in watching uh, a play, he was accosted by a man who shot him in the back of the head. How terrible. The president of a nation shot in the back of the head at close range with a gun they took him away and put him in the mortuary and they took everything out of his pocket and you can go to the american library of congress today and you can find all the possession that were in his pocket a unique set of things that have been uh, recorded and it's very interesting to read uh, what was found in his pocket there was a handkerchief embroidered with an A, a boy's pen knife, two pairs of glasses, one glasses uh, case repaired with string, a lens polisher, a watch fob, a wallet with a $5 bill in it. And then interestingly, there were nine newspaper clippings, like random newspaper clippings that were in his pocket. When they took them out, they found out that in his pocket were these newspaper clippings that were speaking all about how great he was. What a good man he actually was and how he was the answer to the nation's problems. He clearly needed to walk around with these in his pocket to encourage him. Even though he was a great man with, the, I mean, and the president of a nation. How many of you know it's very difficult to keep your confidence levels up? Sometimes, even if you are in a prominent position, Elijah struggled with confidence. He needed to be encouraged by the Lord. He, 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 he went and hid in a cave. Timothy went around uh, the, the big church at Ephesus, which Paul put him in charge of. And uh, he was in a great role and, and, and a great opportunity, struggled with confidence. And Paul had to write to him and say to him, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and, and of power and of a sound mind. How many of you struggle with confidence today? You've been uh, in the company 
of many great people. And lots of people use all kinds of things to boost their confidence. You can never have a strong life unless you have confidence. We are not talking about the confidence that the world is God. The type of confidence where uh, they tell you to, to power dress. All the self-help books teach us how to be confident. There, there is more to confidence than that. There is truth in them, but there is much more to it. And people are desperate to be confident. So they try and find all sorts of ways to be confident. They try and dress to be confident. People do all sorts of things to add to their confidence. They take drugs to be confident, sniff cocaine, smoke crack pipes. People drink and then they go driving along the road, putting people's lives in danger because they think they are confident. But actually, they are overconfident. The wrong kind of confidence and, and they end up in trouble. You need real confidence from God. I read a funny story about uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes. He was a great physician and uh, pharmacist, and he did a lot of studies in medicine. He was really interested in the fact that in the 1800s, they used uh, ethyl to put people to sleep. They didn't use chloroform. He wondered how patient felt. So what he did was he decided he would take some ethyl. So the first time they gave him ethyl, he laid on the bed. And just before he fell asleep, he felt he's got the answer to the world's problem. So when he woke up, he thought, man, I had it, but I can't remember what it was. So he said to the people, listen, you need to bring a stenographer. Put them next to the bed. I'm going to do this again. So he, he took some more ethyl. And, and then as he was beginning to fade, he said, here it comes. I, I can feel it. The answer to the world's problem. Write it down. And this is what he blurted out. The entire universe is permeated with a strong odor of turpentine. Confidence gives you capacity. And confidence will cause you to do things that are seemingly impossible. And a lack of confidence will stop you from doing things that are easy. In sports psychology today, it's, it's a big industry. They, they, they take sports teams and, and, and they tell them it's not just your skill, but it's your attitude and, and your confidence that is going to cause you to win. Nichols, the golfer, said confidence is the most important single factor in this game, no matter how great your natural talent. So let's look at 10 things we can learn from King David. Bear in mind, this was just a boy. He did something unusual. He took on a giant with tremendous strength and with courage. And it didn't come from reading a book or listening to a podcast in his sleep. He had something uh, more uh, from God. So, what you've gone through, I don't know what has happened to you in your life. I don't know what experiences you, um, you, you have. I don't, know, I don't know what you've been through. But you know what? Maybe your confidence is shattered. Maybe you've been made to feel like you are hopeless and useless. I know a man who wants to restore you, restore your confidence and build you and give you confidence and strengthen you and give you hope. His name is Jesus. I know him. Do you know him? I want to encourage you to hand over that, that broken life. Or maybe, maybe it's not even a broken life. Maybe you are doing so well. You still need him. My question to you is this. Do you know him? Have you given your life to him? I want to encourage you to open up to him and hand over your life to him. I want to pray a simple prayer with you. So simple. It's not complicated at all. I'm going to give you the words you add the heart to it. Pray this simple prayer with me. Say, Father, today I recognize that I'm a sinner who needs a Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Have mercy on me. I believe with all my heart that your son Jesus died for me and rose again. And I believe with all my heart I confess his lordship over my life. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Take over my life. Help me live for you all the days of my life. Fill me 
with your Holy Spirit and make me your own. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you pray this simple prayer, I want to know you are born again, you are saved, you are now a child of God. Welcome into God's kingdom. Welcome into the family of God. Heaven is rejoicing because of you. This is the most important decision you've ever made. God bless you for making that decision. And I also want to say a big thank you to you for tuning into this broadcast. And I trust that it's been a blessing to you. I look forward to coming your way next time. And before I sign off, I want you to always remember that if you want a life that's going to be as abundant as possible without chaos and confusion, don't do it any other way. Just one way. Do it God's way. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Life Television program. We hope you have been blessed by the teaching. Tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week. You are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollard's Hill Library, CR41LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.